Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Kim Parley. So glad you could join us tonight. Well, US, the U.S. Federal Reserve has once again raised interest rates. They increased the benchmark rate by 25 basis points. This is the final policy meeting of 2017. And joining us to go over some details is Scott Coburn. He is Managing Director of Global Active Fixed Income at TD Asset Management. And new to the show, great to have you here. Thanks, Kim. Uh, here. It's, uh, it's great. We hope to have you back a whole lot more as sure. well. Um, let's talk a bit about the Fed first off in terms of you know, the announcement came out today. They yep. raised interest rates. What stood out for you in the announcement? I mean, they basically increased growth. So, you know, continue to see synchronized global growth, and the U.S. continues to grow. Unemployment rate, they, they dropped their uh, expectations for the increase in unemployment rate. Uh, but they kept inflation steady, right? So um, this sort of sense of gradually tightening uh, monetary policy continues uh, with this sort of uh, announcement. Yeah, and there was really no, I'd say, surprise from, you know, from markets or even a big market reaction. I'd say anything unexpected anyway. No, I think the markets were marginally more hawkish. Uh, yeah. They expected a little bit more, uh, maybe an uptick in inflation longer term. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's more of the same, I, I think, out of the Fed. Um, so a little bit of a dovish reaction. The U.S. dollar sold off. Bonds rallied a bit. Equities were supported. So it's more of the same for me. Central banks gradually normalizing rates here. Yeah. Um, taking their time, um, waiting to see inflation. Yeah, and, and I guess that is the waiting to see inflation. Yeah. I mean, everyone is waiting and, and kind of really understanding, you know, whether it's structural or what's going on here. How do you think the Fed or all the central banks are going to be addressing that in the next little while? Well, you know, I think it's just a go-slow approach, whether it's the ECB or the Bank of England or the Fed. And I think belatedly the Bank of Canada is sort of, you know, struggling with this low inflation uh, phenomenon. But I think it's a, f a function of our, our global economy, more technology, more competition, aging demographics. So part of that is going to continue to suppress uh, inflation. But, you know, global economy continues to synchronize, so that allows them to to slowly remove uh, the stimulation that uh, they had sort of post-2008, and we gradually normalize short-term interest rates. I know we've talked a lot about um, you know, rates gradually going up, and I think a lot of people are arguing right now they're not going to go up to the, 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 the old normal. No. There's a yeah. new normal yeah. now. Um, but also the fact you know, quantitative easing is turning into quantitative tightening, and you're getting this synchronized move. So it was the synchronized central banks that help markets move up. Uh, equity markets, I should yep. say, and then synchronized, which is going to maybe put some a damper on things. I mean, are you concerned about that kind of that synchronized slowing and what it could have? I think when you undo what really has been very supportive of the markets, yes. there's potential here for some surprises, right? So the, the volatility uh, emerges in markets, whether it's equities or rates or currencies. And so that uh, is something as this quantitative tightening process on unwind. So um, you have to be a little bit more mindful of, um, you know, your portfolio construction in this environment where you're going to get uh, pockets of surprise. You know, broadly speaking, though, the central banks are there just try to keep things steady and no big surprises. Right. So for someone who's in the fixed income business <laughs> and their job is, I mean, uh, you know, fixed income, I think, has uh, in terms of what people think it is and maybe the role it plays uh, um, is changing, I'd say, a little bit in, in the past little while, whether it should is another question. Um, but, you know, for, for, for someone who you know, is going to be watching what happens in fixed income in this changing rate environment. What should people be, you talked a bit about volatility, what should we be bracing for? I think fixed income will always, or well has and always will play an important role in your portfolio, yeah. right? Um, so it's not going away. Don't expect it to give you equity-like returns. I mean, part of this tailwind has been, you know, the, the central banks providing a nice lift. Uh, but dampen your expectations for returns. Uh, quantitative tightening is going to maybe introduce some periodic episodes of volatility. Mm -hmm. So you want to slowly introduce some degrees of freedom in how you think about fixed income, and that, uh, that is important. So what does that mean? What does degrees of freedom mean? Um, you know, introducing more opportunities in your portfolio. So consider private debt. Um, maybe think about going global. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's more opportunities there. Canada's a small part of the global opportunity set. Uh, those are all you know, things that uh, people should think given the potential for uh, some volatility going forward. I think um, people may not know you're, you're um, new to TD. I mean, you were yep. there once before, have come, have come yeah. back. And, uh, but I, part of, I think, your mandate is, is to have that optionality when yep. you're looking at uh, a fixed income and, uh, and having the choices, I think, that, that you talked about. Tell me, what, what are some of the things that you can do, maybe, that you think will make it more interesting to manage through this, this quantitative tightening cycle? Yeah, uh, degrees of freedom imply a more wider opportunity set. So yeah. I talked about a couple of those. Uh, but also, you you think about maybe even introducing uh, flexibility to short. So I'm not, you know, 
gradually allowing rates to rise, uh, rates are going to rise. Mm -hmm. So you might want to tactically ha introduce the ability to benefit when rates go up. Right. So that's a, 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 a part of the uh, solution. Being unconstrained or less constrained uh, is important. So looking outside of Canada, as I said, 3% of the global opportunity set, so emerging markets perhaps, um, you know, more selective uh, uh, global high yield, uh, those are all different ways. So being a lot more opportunistic uh, in this environment where you're going to see bumps. And I think, you know, people will probably be surprised to know, and I, I always, uh, I'm, I'm kind of somewhat gobsmacked at this number, <laughs> when we actually see, I think it's $11 trillion of the entire uh, global bond market is, not only is it not giving you anything, you got to set technically pay them, yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. negative. And for, for Canadians too, that real home bias, right, you know, yeah. only 3% of the global bond market is here, which means y you got to look somewhere else. Yeah. There's been uh, a look for yield uh, globally, right? And when you have negative yields in, a, in Japan and Europe, that it forces people to, to look abroad. And yeah. Canadian yields are low, and rates aren't going up very aggressively here. So it makes sense to, to step outside of Canada on a thoughtful basis, you know, manage uh, currencies thoughtfully, diversify, and uh, that's, that's very important. But you definitely have to look outside of Canada. I've only got about 30 seconds, yep. but just in terms of interesting either currencies or areas or parts of the world, or anything that you're seeing that kind of piques your interest? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the emerging market world, I like Mexico. Currency is cheap, fundamentals are very good, and yields are a lot higher. You're talking about 7, 7.5% 7 right now. So that's something that we're watching ahead of the elections and NAFTA negotiations. Yeah. High yield, I still like high yield. It's more on a name-specific basis, but definitely uh, something to stay invested in. Scott, great to have you here. My pleasure. Thanks, Kim. Scott Coburn, he is Managing Director at TD Asset Management.